from now on, it is going to be my way or the highway, all right? Does anybody have a problem with that? <laughs> hey, new guy. I said, does anybody have a problem with that? No, ma'am. <laughs> hey, he has a name. It's Dragon. You want to know your name? Check your hat. You get the hat, right? All right, guys. I'm ready to host this Friends podcast. Does anybody have a problem with that? <laughs> this is Spoilers. <laughs> Classics. This is Spoilers. Don't fire me, boss. This is good as my acting is going to get. If you have a problem, Pappy, I'll give you a problem. We, we got a lean, lean crew tonight. We had a lot of lean. problems about an hour ago. I, <laughs> Me having most of them. Oh, my gosh. Do you want to talk about that? Because we were going to yeah. do yeah. a whole different pod. It was going to be a Patreon pod for Nephew Quinn, right? Nephew Quinn, yep. Yeah, so um, I actually was on my computer... 45 minutes before start time and it's like i was like oh might as well restart it it was, it was looking really weird and i just could not get it restarted it was really jacked up and then one of our guys dropped out with like 10 minutes before start time and then one guy's moving still it one was guy one chaos. guy moving still pappy name names what's going on here Corey is moving mikey picked up an extra shift at work and stevie's power cord wouldn't work. It was just a total collapse of the podcast. An unprecedented collapse, like uh, Parliament in the movie we were going to do. But we have these three. Yeah, and I'm happy to have us three. I'm glad we're doing some sort of podcast tonight. We all scrambled. We watched an episode of Friends, yeah. and here we are. <laughs> uh, season four, episode 10, the one with the girl from... Okay, Poughkeepsie. Poughkeepsie, but this is like the craziest spelling of the town. I actually had to Google, is this town real? And it is. Oh, yeah, it's in I New just York. remember there was a song by a band I like back in the day. It was like a girl from Poughkeepsie or something like that. So, yeah. Gotcha. So, I guess my. It sounds opening... like a city that Bugs Bunny would take a left turn at. <laughs> like, it doesn't sound like yep. a real city. So. Uh, he goes from there to Timbuktu, I think, a lot between those two places. That's correct, Pat. Mm-hmm. But my That's opening question for you guys tonight, give yourself a little introduction. We're doing Chandler tribute spoilers. We're still going through the the Kathy Chronicles. This is part, gosh, six of eight, I think is what we said, <laughs> Brett. But we'll see. Maybe we'll just keep doing Friends forever when we need filler episodes oh, yeah. or something like that. But um Opening question. Have you ever tried to set up a gal pal of yours? And how did that go? Whoa. Uh, oh, this is Brett. Um, I don't know if I ever had any gal pals that like I wasn't madly in love with secretly. So I don't think I ever sold Jeez, I don't Brett. think I ever. Everyone, <laughs> what the? I don't hell? know. I, I had a lot of. I don't. I don't know. I had acquaintances. I guess. I don't know. No, I doubt it. I doubt it. Okay, so I, I guess know. backup question. Do you think there's no such thing as plutonic friendship between between, between like opposite or like yeah yeah uh, no yeah I, you know I what I mean. I think you can have platonic friendship. I I think that's. I think you definitely can. Sorry, um, yeah, that's all, that's all I got. You, you, that was a you sprung that on me. That's a. What about your like? One. You ever try to set up your sister or something like that? You know, just any with somebody with one of my friends. <laughs> just with anybody, <laughs> dude. <laughs> Are you guys like hitting at something here? Is there no. a story that you- I don't know? Listens no. to the pod. I bet he feels very hurt. But why don't you just take the baton here, Pap? I think Brett has made. Did you say his Ian? Okay. Clear. Yeah. Did I set your wife up with Ian? That's not what I said. Oh. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. After they were married? What? <laughs> no. <laughs> Pat, Before they were. Have you ever right. tried to set up a ba- gal pal? Where are you recording from tonight? Gal pal. 
Things getting awkward. Pappy, recording from Goshen, Indiana. Uh, Two-hour train ride from Fort Wayne, so not that far. Um, I do believe that a man and a woman can be platonic friends, by the way. I don't think everything has to have a romantic undertone to it. And yes, I have. I'll, we're naming names tonight. I set up your brother, Brother Jordan, with my cousin, Annie, and I think they went to prom together. Oh, wow. And then she broke up with him, and Jordan was pretty sad. AJ? Yes, they dated for a while. Oh, oh. man. Why did she break up with him? Um, Because he quit the pot. My understanding <laughs> was that she felt... <laughs> That it was just more of a platonic friendship. Yeah, she. Dang. Okay. She saw him as a friend. You guys, they're both married now, so, so I think we're everything worked out. Yeah, this was literally over twenty, like fifteen years ago. Josh, Long did time you mention so. Ian? Did that about what you were trying to set me up for her? No. Okay. That was I don't know. Um, he's just the one friend of yours I could think of that listens to the pod or might listen to the pod. You know, right? You say other than best friend Drew. Mm. Well, he's my friend. I don't really no, categorize him as true. your friend in my mind, but I think of your friends. It's not best friend Drew. But... Naturally. Wow. Wow. I tried to set up, like, I, I don't know if I like, tr- this is Josh from Goshen, by the way. This wasn't, I, was, I felt like I was kind of in the middle of this situation. I don't know if I was the key setup person, but there was a point where very much earlier in my work career and I'm not going to name names, but it was a long, long time ago. There's like a gal that liked a guy in the department that I was working in and I knew her and was friends with her. And um, later turned out that he didn't play ball for that team. Mm. Ah, Yeah. So that was like, that's like a friends episode. Yeah. It should be. All right, you guys ready to get into this? I feel like I should be shoving 15 Oreos into my mouth just to oh, get yeah. me to shut up right now. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> but that's how this whole thing starts Personal off, best. Pappy. You got any notable notes from this opening in the coffee shop, as usual? Hey. Mm. Hey. hey. Sorry I'm late. Did I miss anything? Well, Joey stuffing 15 Oreos in his mouth. <laughs> 15? Your personal best. <laughs> well, I would say 15 Oreos really is an incredible amount of Oreos just to go back. Uh, it's a new record. Scene. Yeah. It's a Christmas episode. Did we start in the coffee shop? Uh, yeah, after the credits, uh, it goes to the coffee shop. After so we, we, we learned that Ross, yeah, is going on a date or is dating a couple women um it's been a while since we've done one of these but now it's the christmas episode we had the thanksgiving one and another holiday episode which stands out and rachel is looking for a fling and chandler dearly departed is saying that he can help facilitate that actually joey thinks that he can also help facilitate that as a christmas present hey look at this they're lighting the big christmas tree tonight um that paper's two weeks old all right, who keeps leaving old newspapers in the trash? I really wanted to take Kathy to this. I can't believe I missed it. Hey, you know, at least you have somebody to miss that stuff with. I hate being alone this time of year. Next thing you know, it'll be Valentine's Day, then my birthday, then bang! Before you know it, they're lighting that damn tree again. Oh, I want somebody! <laughs> You know, I want a man. I mean, it doesn't even have to be a big relationship, you know? Just like a fling would be great. Really? I didn't think girls ever just wanted a fling. Well, let me tell you something. It's been a long time since I've been flung. Well, I know what I'm giving you for Christmas. 
whoa whoa but, yeah <laughs> one of several transgressions in this episode oh i was hoping you wouldn't go there but i did make a joke not a joke a comment to Brittany about it but i guess we'll get to that later this is actually one of the rare rachel and chandler team-ups you don't get a lot of those storylines when it's just them so it's a good combo yeah no, they, like they're it. good they're both funny together because yeah they hug on the couch and kiss and we're yeah, talking no, about plutonic friendships and that's like mm-hmm it's very European. If they were like going out with other people and told them that they did that, I uh, feel like they'd consider that cheating. We cuddled on the couch and smooched. I don't know about cheating, but my my wife would want to stab that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see your point. Um, that does happen in this episode. I think Chandler like smooches her head and forehead a couple times and she cuddles yeah. up with him. This is the episode where Joey incessantly taps Monica's chest to get a fake yeah. fire out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That one's not tough. His, not his finest moment, but I, I hopefully it's just under the guise of friendship because she doesn't seem too bothered. But yeah, that's not a good look, Joe. He really saw some little flames in there. Hey, you never know. You mm. never know. Is, that, is it possible? No, it's not possible. You never, <laughs> never know flames. You never sir. know. <laughs> you guys were earlier when you were questioning my remembrance. We just watched this, but there is like a cold open that's in the apartment, and then they flip yeah. over, and they're in yeah. the coffee shop. They really set up all the plots here right at the top. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you get you get Ross's right away because he's dating someone in Poughkeepsie, which is a two-hour train ride, hence the name of the episode. Yeah, that's the whole – that's the titular – like thread Mm -hmm. of this episode anything else to spell that out pappy because there's not a bunch of meat to that one even though it is the title (laughs) that's not what this no and i'm wondering nothing is remembered from that like storyline i don't think yeah and it's funny because i've seen this episode before this is like one of the few that i've seen and i didn't remember that until i heard joey refer to himself as dragon later in the episode so all of a sudden i was like holy shit i have seen this one before um i don't know is it just like a mechanic of the writers to try and separate ross and rachel by as much physical distance right like their own they're doing their own things romantically they're going their own way and like the writers literally put them as far apart as possible (laughs) they just put ross on a train and that's maybe my question too for brett like as much as this is a chandler tribute is there like a little bit of a sense here in the middle of season four that Ross and Rachel are the main characters of Friends? No, I think, or am I, I just kind of seeing a pattern I think where there's season, not? Starting late season two, when they start dating, all the way to about this time, and gosh, even through the season, because Ross meets Emily soon, which is another reason I think they're trying to split, keep a distance between Rachel and Ross. So that when Emily comes in, which is really soon, um, I don't know, maybe it could be more jarring. I don't know. But I would say the two people that really grabbed the attention of everybody at this time, the first four or five seasons, I would say were definitely Rachel and Ross. Uh, You know, they were uh, will they, won't they. Um, Rachel fat like an icon in the 90s, like her hairstyle. I mean, I wanted like gel in my hair which is terribly uncomfortable. I'm sure you guys have both had gel in your hair, right? Oh, yeah. Back in the day. Ooh, that's yeah. super uh, hard LA, gel. LA looks. <laughs> LA looks. Like I, know, I know somebody out there. Mm. <laughs> but so I think they were the big. Now, again, we get into later on swimmer fatigue and everything. But like, I think y- you guys are right. Like, I didn't even think about it. But his storyline is so lean. Like, I think it's like yeah. we're going to give him almost nothing. And he's going to be doing some pretty heavy lifting by himself. I mean. He's sleeping. Yeah, but like without him, <laughs> a big part of it. Without him and his personality, that storyline would be like awful. But like he's goofy. And then his whole thing about, oh, I like her. She's really far away, and then I don't really like her that much. But she's right up town. Like it's really freaking funny to me. It's forgettable. Yeah. I'm not going to back down from that. His storyline is forgettable. For sure. No, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with and you. And it's the title of the episode. But it did make me laugh out loud yeah. several times. I love when he was like. I think I think she might be a little bit racist, yeah. but she's so close. <laughs> <Yeah>. Like, <laughs> and also, it struck me. We've mentioned this a couple times on Friends. What reminds us of Seinfeld in mm-hmm. it? 
And the ending of his plot where he's falling asleep in the tram and missing all the stops. That's a that's a George, right? Or is that a Kramer? Or is that I feel Kramer? like I've seen that on side. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like a no, missing side deleted scene. Yeah, maybe they were trying to do a little bit of that. I mean, they were the two biggest shows on television. And well, no, Seinfeld was off at this point, but just barely. Well, what's very Seinfeld is they're drinking Snapples. At the beginning, too. Like, I thought that's a very Jerry Seinfeld move. Oh, God. I haven't had a Snapple in 20 years. Mm-hmm. Oh, I would love to hear that little Oh, yeah. Pop and then see what it says under and the fact. One of the, I would chug half in one sip. Right oh, now. yeah. That sounds delicious. The fact, yeah. Uh, yeah, they. I would take them as a sponsor. Snapple hit us up. <laughs> but yeah. do you guys have any other thoughts on the Ross plot line? Maybe we can go through the characters like that. And I, I feel like we've talked his meager storyline to completion, <laughs> I, but is there anything else you guys want to add? So, where were you? Oh, on a date. Yeah, I met this girl on the train going to a museum upstate. Oh, oh yeah, I meet museum? Her. No, answer his. <laughs> okay, it was just me and her at the back of the train, and I sat near the door, so she'd have to pass by me if she wanted to, like, switch cars. She was totally at my mercy. Yeah, I wrote down a, a, a line that I thought was funny by him. Um, and again, it's all set up because he's sleeping. When uh, Phoebe's talking about her song and he's sleeping, she's like, oh, if you were awake, what was my song about? And he goes, the one with the cat. I thought that was pretty funny because it's smelly cat. But And that's the one. That's her main hit. That's her like first played on her like best of album, Smelly Cat. Mm-hmm. It's a good guess. It's a good Ugh, guess by Ross. Worst of. But yeah. Actually, Phoebe's got a banger line in this episode, but the rest of the time, singing Phoebe is just kind of brutal sometimes. But Well, that's what I was going to say. Like, like speaking of Phoebe, I mean, or speaking of Ross's lean story, Phoebe's kind of in the same boat. She has nothing going on, really. Again, that, but when she has nothing, they put a guitar in her hand. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's just, if she's got arguably a leaner story than Ross, because at least Ross is like the episode title, like a few minutes. Phoebe has nothing to do except for write a holiday themed song, which is like really the only touch point to this being a holiday episode outside of some of the decorations yeah. we see. But she's. And would that paper. make you feel warm to watch that with family, like on a holiday? Like, do you think this fits into any sort of Christmas classic collection? Is there anything. That you like because I feel like they do try to, oh, they do no. try to kind of end it on a. It's not it's not Christmassy enough. She kind of gets it right but wrong in her own Phoebe way. Yeah, and de- makes everyone definitely. feel good. It, 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 she does end the whole episode proper, right, Pat? Yeah, she does. I mean, it's no like office Christmas party episode. Like those were always. Yeah, th- they were known for that stuff. Yeah, mm. for sure. But I don't know. It's always kind of fun. When you see these movies around or see these episodes around that time of year, it's incredibly jarring, though, to like catch a rerun of a sitcom and it's the Christmas episode and it's like the middle of August or July. It just feels so out of place when that happens. That actually happened with Ted Lasso in season two. Like they had to make two random episodes because they were only expected to make certain. And then in August, like episode four, season two, it's a Christmas episode. It's one of the best episodes they ever had. But it's like really, it was. So, we were like Christmas. It's like August first. Mm. But yeah, it is really weird to go back and Josh. This episode's no holiday armadillo, so um, there are better Christmas episodes. I feel like so. I would not say this is one of them, but Christmassy. Went to the store, sat on Santa's lap, asked him to bring my friends all kinds of crap. <laughs> Said all you need is to write them a song Now you haven't heard it yet So don't try to sing along No, don't sing along Monica, Monica Have a happy Hanukkah So Santa Claus He said hello to Ross And please tell Joe Christmas will be snowing <laughs> And Rachel and Chandler How's the moon glitter and glow 
I agree with you guys. It's not a classic, but I do think there is something in the ending with Phoebe. It feels warm or something like some good mm-hmm. vibes. And it's funny. Like the endings, I, I think that's funny. Yep. I agree. They're all smiling. They're all having, you know, Chandler's look, this looks having a blast. Like it's, it's nice. It's a nice ending. Well, we talked about some of the ingredients to this friend's pie, Ross Ooh. and Phoebe. Mm. But I think two main ingredients, I don't know if we can really split up their storylines and do them one by one, but could, let's talk about the whole Monica Joey restaurant thing. Because again, with Monica's chef career, Joey could have been on her staff for two or three episodes. And in my mind's eye, looking back, I feel like this these moments are so good. It almost felt like it was a whole season where Joey is like, working at Monica's restaurant. <laughs> and I kind of wish there would be. There's like some really good stuff going on in here. For the last two weeks, I have uh, tried really hard to create a positive atmosphere. Can't hear you. <laughs> mm. It could have opened up a lot of cool storylines, but like they had set up the, she's miserable there. She took over for the the old owners I mean, like the family works there everybody hates her they kind of set that up but yeah a couple episodes of him would have been really fun like when i think of friends side characters that weren't around very much one of the ones i always think of always yes. is the guy his name's fred stoller and yeah. he's the he's Black the waiter dog guy he i don't watch the simpsons but isn't he like really similar to like somebody on the simpsons sure that too <laughs> dude if if you look up his IMDb, so funny. No, for I did. The top yeah. one is Little Man from 2006. It's a 4.5 <laughs> move. <laughs> is he? That's the one with um, Wayne's brothers. That's so Wayne's funny brothers. Yeah. to me for some reason. But he's also never watched. He's that. also in Dumb yeah. and Dumber. Yeah, Gold Member. Oh my god, he's one of the funniest parts in. Dumb and Dumber when he gets punched in the face. Hang up. Oh, the phone. good call, Brett. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And punches him right through the There's head. something about him that made us all go to his IMDb. Like as soon as you saw <laughs> him, like, all right, I know this guy from somewhere. I love his affect in this. He should oh, be in more yeah. episodes, right, Pappy? Yeah, no. His name is Dragon. Well, and here's here's what I'll say. Like, I know in the, in the past I've praised friends for like all these guys being able to keep their egos in check and everything. I kind of wish we just, to you guys' point, I wish this episode was almost like pure Joey and Monica in the kitchen. Like, that's too good. Yeah, it's it's a great. It's so good. It could have been like the one with the dragon or something. It would have been better. Even like the dynamic with like all of the staff hating her, who, by the yes. way, their ethnicity has totally changed from before. Like, I think they were all like Italian or something last time. Like, weren't they? Like, it was like, yeah, but it could have been a different shift. But yeah, yeah for sure. they all still hate her. But I mean, there, there's just a lot of opportunities. The whole for world jokes. is united in hate. Yeah, <laughs> it's just good. Yeah, it's good stuff. I agree. I think there's some alluded to off-camera conversations that Joey has with the other staff, and I want to be there for that. Honestly, I want to see. I want to see Fred Stoller wait one table or something. Like there truly is like a lot more content to be delved into here. Somebody mm-hmm. wants to do Definitely. fan fiction of friends. I think this is like some ripe territory. Well, this whole storyline has a great little arc. Like Joey's going to be nice. Then he finds out he can have $200 in one hand and 300 in the other. <laughs> <laughs> and then he doesn't be nice. And then he realizes his friend, like his friendship is more important. Like that's like a great, just little story arc right there for Joey contained within this like five minutes that we get of it Mm -hmm. the way it it's like a comic strip the way it's presented here it's so brief but oh yeah i i mean monica's speech always gives me is a little cringe for me like when uh because it's just seems it doesn't matter but yeah no it's really good i i I really even though you know he's a bad guy and he's supposed to be rooting for monica like every time you look and see joey standing next to that Fred yeah. Stoller guy. <laughs> they're like opposite looks. Yeah. And they're just so freaking funny. And they already love Joey. Like it could have been, it would have been 
cool if he would have done what Joey said he was going to try to do, which was infiltrate, but... Say nice things about her. Yeah. You know, Joey got some of that Skrilla. I think there's a reason, like, the name... There's a reason the name Dragon was, like, the one thing I remember, too, because that, that made me laugh out loud again, because it's just you don't expect that His to be Dragon. the cool work nickname that Joey picks. That's something that you would name your, like, flower baby in like <laughs> junior high when you have to like take care oh, of that no. little baby for I want my boy to have a cool name like dragon do you, <laughs> do you remember do you remember the name of your flower baby I don't can you guys just explain I do. It was name, what that named is. by some people what is you never did flower baby oh they had real babies by that time I had to put Josh. a key in the back of mine and turn ours, ours were literally bags of flour and they said that a couple kids had an egg in it and they're gonna check to see if the egg is cracked at the to end teach you the burdens of being a parent, right? Like yeah, that's the whole design. Yeah, like if you like if the baby died or, or like whatever, you would like, you know not get a very good grade. We had we had robot babies that you had to carry around, and they would cry. This is the only reason that America has survived at all because of these like little brief classes in <laughs> yep. class junior high. Yeah, Phew. just barely making it. <laughs> and we thank them for it. Maybe who I am today. Yeah. Flower babies. Wow. What else you guys got about this Monica oh. Joey plot situation? There's a there's a lot of meat to chew. I need more swordfish. Can you give me some more swordfish? I don't speak English. <laughs> it did a minute ago. Well, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Fine. Somebody let me out, please. Come on, I'm cold. <laughs> I'm covered in marinara sauce. Come on, let me out. I don't know. It, it does get to the point where it's pretty cruel, you know? Like, that's what makes Joey have the turn. Yeah. You know? Like, she's. Cool. What gets pretty cruel? Cool. The other staff's cruel pranks. On yeah, her, they're mean. Yeah, they. It's almost like an I Love Lucy situation where she gets shut in a freezer. You don't know if she's going to be able to get out. Um, she's just covered in marinara sauce, and Courtney Cox is is really sympathetic. Like, yeah, she can be kind of cringy in these parts, but she seems very upset, like genuinely. That's what springs Joey into action. Come to her rescue. I didn't really think about that, but her acting is pretty damn good throughout that. Like, you feel that secondhand embarrassment pretty hardcore when she's like got the marinara sauce she's stuck in the freezer there's a handle there the whole time mm. when she starts but to speak in it like she trails off i'm like yeah that's brutal i mean that's like kind of like quiver she kind of like quivers yeah you're cringing for her you feel bad and then of course the one guy's like we can't hear you yeah mm. that's sad that's sad stuff sad it's not funny well that's not true <laughs> I'm a good person, and I'm a good chef, and I don't deserve to have marinara sauce all over me. You know what? If you want me to quit this bad, then all you have to... Hey, Chef Geller, that little speech you made the other day, well, I got a problem with it. You do? You bet I do. I just, uh, wasn't listening then, that's all. Well... If you want a problem, I'll give you a problem. What are you gonna do? Are you gonna fire me? <laughs> you bet your ass I'm gonna fire you. Now get out of my kitchen. Get out! All right. Anybody else got a problem? Do you think this would have worked, Josh? Like, do you think the staff would that you you've been a boss before? Do you think that would get the respect of the people who <laughs> report to you? This is definitely more of a Stevie question. I feel like <laughs> you'd say but yes. Wait, am I, it, I did. Hey, I've been. A, I'm a boss right now. Well, would you fire someone to send a message? I, w- I would have loved to at my old job, but I didn't have the authority to fire people. Mm. So yes, I'm not good at confrontation like Monica. So uh, I'd probably have somebody else fire him. 
I think that kind of defeats the purpose of sending a message that you're tough. <laughs> this is where I, I I will say I have a connection to this though because I did host the Stranger episode three eighty eight of Spoilers. Classic. It's it's Orson Welles, and this is like Orson Welles' name gets dropped a couple of times. I think there's this fake story that Chandler tells that sets up this whole plot line about like. I know about a director named maybe it was like Orson Welles or something <laughs> who who would hire someone just to fire them as like a power play. So that like sets this whole thing in motion. And then there's a separate joke, Pappy, right? Like something about like, didn't Orson Welles, doesn't he direct Burger King commercials or something? <laughs> he, he's in that French champagne commercial, but yeah, they, they have that joke too. It was funny. I was trying to type in, did Orson Welles really fire people? But as I was typing that I in, was too. It, it, did Orson Welles really fire Joey? <laughs> it's like how it autocorrect. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know if that's true or or not. It. I don't think it's true. I could kind of see it in his later years, but him just more being in like a few blackout state and firing people and not knowing that he had just hired them. So will I like any of these guys? Well, you know what? I'm going uh, to play the field just a little bit more. <laughs> guys are signing over their 401ks to me. You, you work with robots? <laughs> yes. Some Chandler does, which I don't remember him ever doing before, but the two dumb people in the, on, the, on the cast, he does a... They say something stupid to him and he stares at him and goes, yes. Like he does that to Joey and to Phoebe in this episode. Chandler's got some pretty good stuff in this episode, so I'm sure we'll get to that. We're not, yeah, we're not there yet. I was just going to say, before (laughs) we quit, bitch, the Monica Chan or the Monica Joey section, it was there anything else you guys wanted to point out or... And actually, I'm just burying the lead. That's my one thing. Like, (laughs) they wrote quit bitch on her chef's hat. That's pretty wild. (laughs) And then then that one guy, Fred Stoles or whatever, he like. Want to know your name? Check your hat. It's so good. Oh, my God. Yeah. And he goes, we did the hat, right? His name is Dragon. Your name is quit bitch. (laughs) Yeah, that's freaking funny. (laughs) Dude, that's some workplace bullying. (laughs) That's like. The funny part of the show is that like Joey That's is wild. really nice, but he's childish too. But when Monica tells a story about the seesaw, and he goes, "Yeah, <laughs> oh, That's because he thinks his frick- he's literally giggling <laughs> yeah. like a child, yeah. and then he realizes that it's really sad, and he feels bad. That's all I have for that storyline. Me too. You too, Pap. Uh. Yeah, I just I do like when he's like it's gonna be a lean Christmas yeah, around lean, the dragon lean, lean. household. <laughs> lean, lean, lean. I don't know. That lean, lean, lean kind of sticks with oh, me. Oh, that should have been in like everyday lexicon. Oh, it's gonna be a mm-hmm. lean Christmas for the old dragon family. I wish people, more people knew that. Lean, lean, lean. It's a great way to end it. I think maybe one limitation I'm seeing is like from the filmmaker aspect is some of those like conversations they're trying to have between friends are loud yeah like she's supposed to be like in private being like okay now is when i fire you and the guy's literally four and a half feet away (laughs) yeah there's a guy like cutting carrots two feet away and a guy at the fryer like on the other side just like oh i heard that i actually as a i used to have this theory not a theory but i used to say in, in college like once or twice that I feel like the biggest suspend your disbelief and like um, inconsistency in television is is sound, and then in movies it's time. Like hmm. time time in movies is just like can be so wonky. But it depends. With, yeah. With sound, like you ta- exactly what you're talking about. Like you're having conversations about someone in your living room, and the kitchen is like an open air. Like an open concept. <laughs> yeah. They're like 14 feet away. It's more like a play. Like when that kind of shit happens, you know, you have to suspend disbelief that this, yeah, no one's apartment really me. looks or is laid out like this in real life. But it's like, life. what's the, what are the rules? Like, 
you can talk like this. I don't know. It doesn't really matter, but it's like you never know when someone's going to get in trouble. Can I also say, what, why did you pick out the guy with like very short hair to say you get a haircut? Like it, he didn't need a haircut at all. He should have picked out like a hippie looking guy. She just didn't like his style. Mm. It wasn't I think about she getting was just, it shorter. I think it was she fun. was also just kind of cooking at that moment. Like she, she was. was. Good. Let her cook. <laughs> Literally. Yes, that's nice. I was trying to save some of the best stuff for last year. We have what I thought was the most important storyline and what I based my opening question on. Have you ever set up a gal pal before? And here we have Chandler trying to set up one of the most eligible bachelorettes of all time, Jennifer Aniston, <laughs> Jennifer Aniston in the middle of New York City. Um, where do you guys think we should start with this one? Oh, yeah, I just showed them this picture of you, and guys are throwing themselves at me. They're buying me drinks. They're giving me stuff. Next tonight? Sure. Where are the seats? Wherever. I've got, like, 20. <laughs> I mean, my favorite joke that I was talking about is, like, the mm. very beginning of the storyline. What is it? So, when she's, like, on the couch, she's like, oh, I'm just... She says something like, I just want to... I'm I, I'm lonely. I Why can't I... I don't, whatever. I don't, I don't want to be alone. And then Gunther walks up, and she goes... Oh. I, just, I want a man and Gunther's like grinning and then he just like mm, and yeah. walks away like I think that's so freaking funny because that's so Gunther she says that yeah I don't want to be alone and then she says I need a man he's like well I'm out <laughs> I'm disqualified by by that just devastated Gunther but yeah so she's she hasn't dated anybody since Joshua I don't think oh that's not, that's coming up I, I don't know if she's dated anybody since Ross so she's she's getting, I don't think uh, so that was the whole point yeah, trying to get over us. Basically, she's saying "mama horny" is what she's saying, mm. but you can't say that on uh, NBC on Thursday night. So, which offer would have been the most tempting to you? Uh, Nick's tickets, even over Rangers. I think Rangers would be more fun. Oh, I thought you meant between the the first two. Well, there's uh, what, what are they? There's Rangers. There's Nick's that are mentioned. There's cigars. There's Cubans. Some... Yeah, I, I would definitely rather go to a Rangers game than a Nick's game. I know my wife would as well. So. I don't know what the other ones are. That seems uh, way cooler than like a cigar after work in my office. It's going to stink up my I want, office. What, it, what if he signed one of his robots over to you? Well. One of the things someone offers is an eight-year small batch Hazel Badens. Oh, yeah. That's, what is that, I did. Josh? I now know in, in my adult <laughs> age that it, I know that's a bourbon. Oh. I've never had the eight-year small batch, but that sounds great. I wonder if it's a toasted barrel. If this was a different show, he would have made a joke about, I hope that's not a, a boy or something. I just wonder if it's a toasted barrel or not. No big know. deal. Just rewinding a little bit, that moment with Rachel talking about, like, I just want anybody, I want a man, makes me feel like uh, dysmorphic isn't the right word, but like, it makes me like, I have this like blindness. Like, what would Rachel find a track like what is she thinking of when she says that mm. is it like a bodybuilder dude is it in this context it seems more like it's a successful businessman no. in new york like a big like from what, sex in the city I, type man is that what you're saying i don't i, I think it's more like <laughs> like, like a, a travis like kelsey a manly, yeah like a manly man like a travis kelsey that's what mm. like she's burt not reynolds. thinking long term like burt she doesn't want to date anybody she like wants... someone with a lot of body hair? Let's get into specifics here. That's what I'm talking about. Like, I'm talking about Burt Reynolds. Yeah, uh, me too. Huge, huge wang. I'm out. Huge dong. <laughs> well, I'm gun throwing that one then. Is that what this whole plot is about? Like Chandler is just like <laughs> sifting out the biggest dongs in his workplace? <laughs> no, I don't Rachel. think so. Because then they'd all think he was even more gay than they already did. Um the, he does have a little bit of the not gaze. Like, it doesn't bother oh. me at all, to be clear, but like, I don't know. That's a joke that people don't typically make anymore. He's like very adamant that he's not gay, you know? But he comes off that way. He knows he does because yeah, of how yeah. he was raised. Mm -hmm. and that, that was like a whole plot point in this Chronicles, right? That his coworkers think he's gay or something. Well, there's that joke. I didn't think you're gay. I do now. Mm -hmm. I thought that was funny. Uh, Josh, do you remember the episode where the guys like ombre they they spray cologne him and Joey, and that they work at the mall. 
<laughs> okay. I'm just saying that's the kind of man she wants. The guy. Yeah, but if you don't know what I'm talking about, other people listening right now, friends, that. they know. They know Ombre Man. What what season? I mean, I've seen all the episodes. What season is that? I or can't place it. Season that. two, maybe they're season two or three. Joey works at the mall and he like oh. shoots Bijou, Bijou for men like the ombre. Yeah, the guy's like ombre. Okay. He's dressed as a cowboy. <laughs> Can I ask too? Like later on in the episode when Chandler asks her if she's ever been with a woman, is that like a callback to anything, or is that just? I don't think so. I think it's just Chandler being horny. He even like, when he's being sweet and comforting, he's and still a little bit horny. He's That's, still yeah. Chandler. Well, yeah, he's just Chan- he says stupid crap. Yeah. That's what he does. That's what got him in trouble to begin with. And that's why she says, what is wrong with you? That's that joke. That's that's. I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Yeah. Matthew Perry tribute episode. He's. I think he's pretty f- funny in this episode. So. Oh, he's great. Especially when he says, when she calls him an idiot and he's like, I know you're right, but why? <laughs> that's, that's a good one. Yes. That's a good reply. Does it keep in your back pocket? Just uh, ended things with me. Did you or did you not tell him that I was looking for a serious relationship? I did. I absolutely did. <laughs> you idiot! I'm sure you're right, but why? <laughs> you don't tell a guy that you're looking for a serious relationship. You don't tell the guy that. Now you scared him away. At one point, Rachel is like, I don't want to date a finance guy or a legal guy. I hate guys with boring jobs. And Matthew Perry is like, well, what was Ross? A lion tamer? <laughs> no, that's good though. He's that's classic like Chandler. The driest job of all time as a museum curator or whatever. But he loves it. All right, guys. Well, I think that's pretty much the spoilers I'm, episode of a plot. Gonna, what we typically do. Yeah, Brad. One joke I miss. I give Phoebe credit. Mm-hmm. I give Phoebe credit every once in a while. For some reason, I really like the boot off joke. It's like, what's your nickname? A pumpkin? Is it maybe boot off? I don't know why I thought that was funny. Uh, I did though, so because it rhymes with Rudolph. That's all I got, Josh. Can I, can I bring all up one, done. one more question? Like, just really quick on something you brought up earlier. Uh, still in final yeah. thoughts for sure. It's when we good. we're talking about how like Chandler like hugs and kisses Rachel, and at one point I think like. Does, does like Joey kiss like Monica on the cheek or something? Is that she kisses him right next to the the mouth? Yeah, so we're all Americans, right? Like that that's really not part of American culture, right? For platonic friends, yeah. uh, some people. But doesn't it? I don't know. I, I just feel like is that just like shorthand in the show to be like, oh, these people care about each other. Like, is that why it's really they close? It's a choice to do that, right? It's not. But there's clearly no romantic chemistry. But it's also, I feel like people don't... Did people do that back in the 90s in New York? Am I just an Indiana boy who's not cultured enough? I feel like... I do feel like more cultured people do that. And that's not me, obviously. Um, I I think it's... I don't think it's super common. It's not as common like it is as is in Europe. But, I mean, come on, freaking Europe. But I, I don't think it's that uncommon... I wouldn't definitely not say it's common, but that's weird though. I, never I bought it that. more. I bought it more in this instance, Pat, mm. when it was Monica with Joey and you feel like they'd been rehearsing this and their relationship does feel more platonic. Whereas Chandler, I guess, especially maybe when he caps everything off with his creepy, like you ever been with another woman fetishization comment. <laughs> Have you ever been with a woman? <laughs> what? Chiller, what is the matter with you? So there is no good time to ask that question. Uh, I don't know. Hit, that wasn't as cool with me. <laughs> I, guess. I don't care. What? Either way, it just feels so not to anything I've actually seen in real life living in this country you know but <laughs> That's so, so maybe i don't know maybe it's just like yeah how you train it well they're in this country it's, but it's a tv show i'm, not, I'm not irl <laughs> i don't know that's all that was, that was my only final thought cool 
Let's get to yes or no's. And as everyone knows on the Friends episode, we give them a special grade lettering mm. as well. So, Brett, w- can we just stick with that same order we had at the top? Yeah, sure. I uh, feel like I can't remember. I give this a. This is definitely a yes because, like, there's some pretty good stuff with some of the storylines and. I mean, I, I I like Ross some enough that you know it, the lean story. It's just weird that it would name it that way. I think this one <coughs> put Poughkeepsie in a title or something. But uh, yeah, I what's the highest grade I give it? B plus. I think I gave A minus to the Thanksgiving one. So I'll give like a a B plus. I, I enjoyed watching this um, episode. By the way, top trivia on IMDb says that that Orson Welles story is true. But who knows if that's true or not. But Ooh. I would say B plus and I enjoyed Me and yeah. Pappy independently both tried to Google that and found nothing, right, Pappy? Yeah, I don't, I'm not good at multitasking either. B <laughs> <laughs> plus for me as well. I think yeah, B to B plus. Definitely, of course, a yes. I kind of don't remember what I've given the other episodes, so I hope that's like grading on the curve accurate. But this feels like a really solid episode of a classic sitcom. Like, particularly with the two main plots, like we mentioned. Um, I don't know, even Ross's plot. Like, I, I, Brett, I think you were hitting on something. Like, the only reason they picked Poughkeepsie is because it's a funny title. Like for the episode, yeah. like just a funny word, a funny name. Um, yeah, laughed out loud a couple of times. I love when Joey's in the main story, uh, which I feel like he pretty much is. Uh, yeah, good episode. Solid grade or final grade B plus. Josh from Goshen. I will give this. That's a little bit higher than you guys have been curving, if I'm being honest. It's been honest. a while. Yeah. From, it's fun to watch Friends. Yeah. But I was going to give it a B plus two. I thought I'd be like leading the curve again, which I usually am. It almost was an A minus for me, but... Same. I, I do think like... I don't know. When you're trying to like rank these things, weirdly the title matters <laughs> or <Yeah>. something. <laughs> and it's like, this is not a classic title for this episode um definitely laugh out loud moments and most importantly for me i was glad to just podcast with you guys oh, tonight yeah. and oh, jumping oh, yeah. jumping back into a friends episode like it's just always so like refreshing and like i said earlier in this episode warm mm-hmm. and it's hard to replicate that so they've been asking for it too yeah the fans have been asking for it and we're we're giving sure. it back to you so b plus yes josh from goshen Before we close out this episode, if you guys don't mind, I did make a little bit of last minute trivia if you guys want to see who can toss out the spoiler, man. Yeah, definitely. Do it. Okay. All right. Loved having, loved hanging out with you guys tonight. Great time. I'm glad we got the pod. I would travel many miles by train to hang out with either of you. (laughs) Aw. Shucks. I Google Matt's. Poughkeepsie, New York, to Manhattan, where I do believe the Friends crew Mm. lives. And by car. By car. The fastest. By car. Not by train. Uh, Should I switch the train? I said it's two hours. Well, then I would ask, like, at what time time of day? Yeah, like, how much traffic we talk? Because that's really going to (laughs) matter. Like, when did you put this in Google Maps? Here's my question. So we're recording this on May 9th. 2024 right it's a thursday night but if you boarded if you wanted to get from (laughs) jeez yeah stick with me here i'm I'm pretty sure i got this if you want to go from manhattan to poughkeepsie tomorrow morning at 6 52 a.m you leave Uh, manhattan what time are you arriving oh okay i like that poughkeepsie yep okay What, what time was it again 
652 Eastern Time. We're all on Eastern Time here on Spoilers. Barely in Indiana, but we are. People don't realize that. We are so far west to still be on Eastern, but we, I digress. Sundown here is an hour later than it is in New York. Same time zone. So it's like yeah, Eastern Time. Yeah, yeah the far west. Like actual... F- actual let's physical get, sundown. Let's not get too let's, let's, let's not get in the weeds on this. I think it's a good point to bring up, Brett. I'm just trying to buy you guys time to think. I already got my answer. Go ahead. You go. Leave at 6.52 a.m. Brett, what time do you arrive? I'm going to say 948. Okay. AM? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm not going to take a nice 15 hour jaunt. I'm going to say 947, Josh. Oh. By car, which I was going to say earlier, it's right. 79 miles. That's a lot, can, especially for New York. You can drive fast. By train, if you hop on at 6.52 a.m. tomorrow, May 10th, 2024, you will get there by 8.45. Pappy, you are the nice. under. You win. You get to toss it to Spoiler Man. Yeah. Have a little last hot break. A little last hot take. And a hot break. And a hot and break. We'll whatever whatever you want to do, Pappy. I don't know. A hot break, a hot take. It's all you, buddy. Good guess by Brett. I just went under. Uh, got lucky. I will say, I was going yeah, yeah. 500 episodes of spoilers. This is like officially now. I know that we made it. We're recording because I know 500 is ready. So fun podcasting with you guys. Thanks to all of our fans. Hopefully, you're liking these friends. This is episode like 509. Oh, we're this way, way down, up there, way down the list. Yeah. <laughs> also, one more thing, one more hot take. Gollum movie. Not excited for it. I think it's gonna be bad. I think it was bad news today coming out of the Lord of the Rings universe. But that being said, take it away, Spoiler Man. Spoiler Man here. Special thank you to our patrons Matt Troll. Anybody else got a problem? Brother Brian. How about you, Chuckles? Nephew Quinn. Now take those salads to table four. Nick. And you, get the swordfish. The wall. And you, ow, ow, ow. get a haircut. Nurse Stacy. You're a great catch. The Meg. You know, when I was telling all those guys about you, I didn't have to lie once. Hey, you know what? I got two tickets to tonight's Ranger game. You want to come with me? PK! Oh, just now I'm right back where he started. Oh, this sucks. Spencer. You should never be allowed to talk to people. Barky420. I guess she's smart. Swole. You graduated Magna Cum Laude, right? Sebastian. You know, the one from Poughkeepsie, even though she's a two-hour train ride away, is really pretty. Dr. Law. But this other girl, well, she's, she's just as pretty. Stone Cold Austin. Being alone sucks. Best friend Drew. You work with robots? <laughs> yes. Okay, there's this one guy. Druid King. I think you're gonna like him. He's really nice, he's funny, he's a swimmer. Oh, I like swimmers' bodies. Oh, yes, and his father invented that magnetic strip on credit cards. Oh, I like credit cards. (laughs) See, not bad at this fixing up thing, huh? If you'd like to request an episode, hear your name read by Spoiler Man, or even just help us make podcasts, please check us out on patreon.com slash spoilers podcast. I thought it was probably more like making out, heavy petting, Undershirt over bra. That's what I was thinking. That was spoilers.